it's Sarah and it's time for our May art journal page. You guys, where did it go? Where did May go? It's May 31st. Um, so I've been working on this and I think I'm going to change it up a teensy bit but we're basically going for a little April showers brings May flowers. So there's little raindrops in there and some doodle flowers and I've done this piece before. If you guys Remember, I did these bookmarks very similarly using the Tombow markers and watercolors. So it's it's right along those lines. I just I just wanted to, you know, I'm on a deadline here. I got to get this done. It's five o'clock on <laughs> May 31st. So this is what we're going for. I'm going to be working on watercolor paper. So I just basically cut it in half. My uh, 12 by 9 paper. Now it's 6 by 9. Um, nine. I'm going to work on the smooth side. We're going to go horizontal and the first thing we're going to do is use something I haven't used. Well now I have. It was in the packaging. This is masking fluid pen. I got this at Hobby Lobby. 15 bucks. Never used it. Time to use it. So what I've done, <clears throat> it's a little hard to control the tip for me. I didn't want to just, I'm too heavy handed and you really want to make it thin. So I'm just going to put a little bit out on a palette, just a little, and then there's a little needle inside the lid that you have to, oh vey, sorry guys, can't see, okay, it goes back inside the needle and I'm going to use a brush. So I'm just going to use a like a number two, I think this is, round brush, number one round, it's small. And I'm going to make little raindrops first. The first thing I'm going to do is just cover this paper. Hopefully you can see this because it's kind of like a very, very, very light blue color. This, uh, I guess it's masking fluid. So I'm making little teardrops. Can you see what I'm doing? Let's see. I'll go in super close. Oh yeah, you can see them. See, it's a little shiny teardrop. But this way I have a little more control using a brush. So basically, just stroke in whatever you think looks like teardrops. You know what I was also thinking? I wonder if you could spatter with this. That's an idea. I don't know. Then you just, you know, but you roll it off at the end. So what I like about this too is, doing it this way, I mean, is I can get it thin because it dries faster. I'm really making these very uniform and I don't want them as uniform as it's turning out. So I'm going to put a few closer, a few bigger, maybe a big one there. And just fill this page and then we're going to have to let this dry. But I'll go ahead and show you the next step. Um, I'm using Tombow markers, which I have in my stash. But any water, um, so your Tim Holtz Distress Markers, those are water-based um, watercolors. So I'm using Cotman or um, it's by Windsor Newton Campus watercolors. And we're going to just do, I am not, not a watercolor expert by any stretch of the imagination and I am tweaking it as I go. I've done a couple of these playing around, bringing my memory back and or you know um, decided that I am going to work on a palette <clears throat> because when I go straight to paper with my brush I am just way too heavy handed. I want it to be a light background and have the flowers be the focal point. So um, I'll go away and get this all done and then we'll come back with the next step. Okay, I'm back. Next step, and that goes so quick because I'm using a thin coat, but you can see all the little raindrops. And I make sure you turn your paper over because I make the raindrops with the points coming toward me, but that's not how raindrops go because I did do them upside down on one of my <laughs> practices. Okay, so turn your paper over. Now, 
the idea with this one, because it's our art journal page, was I'm getting a pencil. And I just have this fancy pencil. Any number two pencil is good. I wanted to do a, a, a frame around it so that we could write April showers bring May flowers going all around the piece. So that's my idea. I had on this one I had done it a little curvy and I like that, but I think I'm going to go even small. I'm going to leave a little bit of a bigger border this time. I just feel like changing it up. So um, remember you have your uh, masking fluid on there so your pencil isn't going to write over that, but I'm going to try and keep this a little lower down. I'm not going to go as close and just create a little curvy. Oh, I did a little close. I'm trying, you know, I, I go bigger, I go home. That's basically it for me. I can't even do a, okay, good enough. It's bigger than it was, that's good. Cause I wanted a little more room to, I don't know, make my words look better. Anyway, all right, we're gonna put a little bit of ground in here. Let me use my graph paper. I love my graph paper. It's so helpful. So like, this looks good. And very gently, very softly, I'm using this pencil because we're going to erase these lines. Um, and really, I could just go right to the piece with my Tombows and not even have these lines at all. But you guys have to be able to plan out your piece and sometimes oops I'm upside down again look at this I'm upside down make sure look I put the ground on the top and I don't want to all right you got to make sure your raindrops are heading in the right direction um, so I'm gonna do this again my bad and just try and get some ground in here All right, now we're heading in the right direction. So I have, these are doodle flowers, right? So look, this is my original one. This is based on, the techniques are based on um, a project by Joanne Sharp that I did. And the doodle flowers were just different flowers that I've seen all over the place. Anywhere, I think I, I go to Pinterest, or whatever and these were the styles and the and the flowers that I decided to choose and then this little butterfly this is really a very much Joanne Sharp butterfly because it's got the little heart shaped petals so you don't have to do the heart shaped petals but where you could just do one heart on each side mm. so this is what I'm going for today I'm gonna basically I'm gonna design it this exact way because then it's easy. I can just look at this and, and I don't have to think. And I have it all um, kind of measured out because that's about the same size as I'm working with. So I'm gonna put a tulip right about here. And to make a tulip, I'm just gonna make a U and go in and in. And then I'm gonna come down and make the tulip leaves are kind of the biggest leaves so I make them like this and they don't have to be identical and there's your tulip and that's kind of it's soft pencil but it's not as light as I'd like it to be this one's gonna be I'll make him a little smaller because I'm running out of room four pe I'm just gonna do four scallop shapes for this little flower and then it has little a little collar on and then pull the, the um, stem down and make two sets of little round leaves. And the butterfly goes up here, so a little head, a body, and I like to make a little tail like that. And let me just do, I'm gonna do two hearts. I like the two hearts. But make your butterfly however you want gonna do like a round one here with just round petals super simple come down with that and I'm gonna make these little pointy leaves I like to like vary is the good word for it varies the sizes of the leaves and the shapes we're gonna make a little I'm just gonna make a little cone shape here 
because that's going to be a little flower and I don't need to make the pencil lines. I'm going to make a big circle up here. Well, it's not that big. And a circle inside and this has just little spindles in it. Um, there's going to be a rose. Let's go. Let's do this guy. There's a five petal. Three, four, five. And then he has like this cup on the bottom. And then his stem is going to come down this way. Um, I need to fit a rose in here. I think he'll be right here. And he has a very sharp, am I in the shot? I know you can't really see this. I'm going to do another little cone flower here. And then he needs a leaf. This leaf is like a round leaf like that. And then this stem, how am I going to make his stem? I'm going to do right down this way. And then he has these type of leaves. And I'm, I'm not thrilled with my tulip is a little too big compared to these, but it is what it is, and you get what you get, and you don't get upset. So this is going to go in front of that other guy. Alright, so now we have our design set, right? <laughs> the first thing we're going to do is very gently, this is what, I'm going to use a palette for this. So I'm going to get out just a stamping block, basically, and use that for my palette. I have palette paper, actually, right here. I'm going to use my palette paper because, and I, I repeat myself a lot, you guys, but I am a heavy hand, and by that I mean... I use a lot of paint on my brush and I use a lot of water. Anything I do, I do it a lot. So I want this background to be light, subtle, not as dark as this, in other words, right? So I can use my watercolor paints. You could also just use your Tombows. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're going to use, now I have a fresh thing of water here. Let me get my little palette ready here. All right. I'm going to use a fairly big, and this is actually a watercolor brush. And here it is. This is like a number 12. Uh, it's a big brush. But I want to pre-wet my surface because that also helps um, dilute the paint because if you go down to dry paper the paint will just stick there without spreading out so the idea and I'm no I'm not a watercolor artist guys I don't profess to know what I'm talking about but just from not doing it a few times I'm kind of figuring out what happens and this is actually the fun part when you put the color down and watch it disperse into where you've um, deposited some water. So if you get this watercolor paper, now look, don't go over your pencil lines because we're gonna erase them after we're done. But I'm putting water not on the flowers, just on the background. So it's a little tricky. Got a little on the leaf. If it gets on the leaf, no big deal. Don't worry. Um, gonna try and go around my stems too, leave a little space. All right, so I'm gonna uh, get some of this color and I'm putting it on my palette first. So I'm putting it on here and I'm really n trying to keep it soft. So I'm making a little puddle of it. And then I'm just gonna start, look, and it just goes where I've put that water and I'm just directing it a little bit. I can push it up against the edge a little. Now look, I didn't go this far when I pre-wet it, so it's kind of 
not moving but look at that that's what I want I did not want it to be as dark now I want to change colors so I'm going to start on this side this time and just pre-wet now don't, I'm not going to go into my grass I did make a little grass area I'm just going to pre-wet the back the background be careful just try to keep it off the petals and the and my water is blue already because I'm telling you this paint um, this is the Cotman I think it's by Windsor Newton so it's called Cotman or this says actually something different campus there's a lot of pigment in this paint and so a little goes a long way and when you're a heavy hand you can really get it gets too dark too soon so I am just trying to FYI just for your info all right I'm gonna go into this dark dark blue and make a little bit on my palette I'm gonna just put the brush down here and really try to keep this light and just put it in look at this I need more though look how cool it just kind of bleeds in to the areas that I already have water so it, it doesn't get away from you you can you have a little more control although it's so wet where I've put it it's not coming out very um, solid it's a very washy which I don't hate I really am trying to keep it soft so you get what you get don't get upset let's just go up here and then I'm gonna add back in with the other color put some of that here and blend the two together oops see I'm going on my background and I really didn't want to so let's put some of this here and I didn't pre-wet I forgot so I'm rushing now I'm starting to not think and I'm just so you want to think a little bit I love not to think <laughs> when I do this by that I mean I just go on automatic pilot and enjoy the process I really it's very Zen for me you know what I mean I don't know what I mean but it is very relaxing and I don't like I'm not thinking I'm not stressed out but look that is that's like a third I created a third color because I can't my water is already uh, dirty let's pre-wet this and like when I join up with where it's already dried I don't know what happens because I I don't do this enough to to know what to expect like right there where I'm joining colors I don't know what ha like if it's good or bad or what I really don't so I get what I get guys that is what it is oh so I kind of made this background oops two-tone it's kind of just turning out to be two-tone because the other ones I really mixed as I went so I kept going back and forth from color from blue to blue and I'm just adding a little more pigment pigment there but I think I'm gonna stop because I don't want to get it too dark and I'm gonna let that dry and when it dries after it dries I should say I'm going oh no oh, whew, for a minute I thought I did it with my um, <laughs> raindrops going the wrong way I'm going to um, erase some of the lines just get them really really faint because the next thing we're going to do is outline all the flowers with our Tombow so I'm going to gather up some colors let me put this aside 
My Tombows are these, and these are awesome water-based markers. They have a brush tip and a fine tip, and I haven't been using the fine tip. I've just been using the brush tip, and we're basically just going to go around the shapes, and we're going to use, you can either use a water brush. I have lots of water brushes, or I'm just going to use a number three round again, and pull that color in to give us our... Um, the colors for our flowers. So I'm going to get the greens and because I want to, I like to make this all the different greenery, different color greens. Um, the blues I'm not going to use. I like this brown for the butterfly. I love all the purples, all the pinks, orange, yellow. Don't need that. And Let's see. I think I should definitely have a good selection with these. So how many is that? It's about like 12 at least. Maybe 15 markers, which you do not need because we have one, two, three, four, five, six flowers and a butterfly. So you could do it with six colors. Um, also going to be using a Sharpie, an ultra fine point Sharpie. I have this awesome pen too, the Uniball Vision. It's waterproof. You just want waterproof. Sharpies are alcohol based, alcohol ink, so they don't mix with water, but you still want to make sure everything's nice and dry before we start putting marks on here with um, our pens. And then that's about it. We're going to do some doodling, but I'm going to go away and let this dry and come back I'm going to erase a lot of the lines that we made and we're going to come back with our um, Tombows and add the color for the flowers so I'll be right back okay it's all dry I did forget however oh and look at this I guess I've left it in the water before but my the paint's peeling off the handle I'm going to pre-wet the grass area and just ate dinner ate a turkey burger I I got a tummy ache from you know which ones are the best butterball the butter butterball turkey burgers are so good but I got a tummy ache I get tummy aches from stuff I don't know why, like I just don't have a strong constitution look. So I just did this and I'm just going to go along the bottom and see if it'll bleed up. Anywho, so tonight I just got the Jenny O turkey and I put some onion soup mix. I mixed some onion soup mix, the powder. I like that. That's all I need. Um, mix that with it. And just uh, made burgers. I've done the meatballs before with the Jenny O. And it, it turns out, like I don't get a tummy ache from it. But, anywho, I don't know. I'm just fingers crossing it that I didn't get a tummy ache. Um, Alright, so I just have to stay out of that. But what I'm going to do now is gently erase... I like to use my pink eraser, but I'm going to use this little guy. I don't even know. This is a Pentel eraser. I'm staying out of the green, but I'm going to gently... Oh, and the thing is, be careful if you hit a raindrop. Oops! Because you don't want to take that off yet. Oop. If you do, it's not the end of the world, but... I just want to get this pencil off here because... Um, I don't want to see through and, oops, I just hit the green. I am a hectic, not hectic, but, ooh, uh, not very cautious, am I? But I'm erasing pencil marks, and then we'll redo it with the Tombows, now that we know where our design is. Oops, I just did the green again. All right, I'll go away and do this off camera. All right, it looks like a bit of a hot mess, so we need to get to work on here and fix it up and make it look nice. We're going to go in now with our Tombow so I can set my water aside 
put my brushes aside. I've already chosen some pretty colors. <clears throat> Let's do our stems and our leaves first. So I have four different colors and I'm just going to let's go all right so now I want to redo what I did with the pencil in the Tombow so I'm making little leaves here and remember we're outlining everything with the black pen at the end so don't worry it's going to be so beautiful Um, let's see, so that's the light green. I like to use this tulip. Some of the pencil lines don't come off. I've, already, I've gone over them with the blue, so they're kind of stuck there. I'm going to do that one and maybe the rose. I just like to have the colors, so I did light green, light green. You know, you know what I'm saying, right? Let's do this one. And that one can be that other green. Let's do these little guys with this color. And then this last one is going to have, this is like an olive. I love this color, olive green. All right, I'm going to do my rose. <clears throat> Let's do it like this red color. I don't know. Is this pink or red? I want my tulip to be, see, it's hard to tell. I want my tulip to be red and definitely I definitely rubbed off some of my um, some of, I almost said snowflakes raindrops when I was erasing but that's okay see there's my tulip we'll see what color this is I'll do the rose this color And I want pink. This guy is going to be pink over here. And I think he's going to be orange. Go right over your raindrops. If there's a raindrop on your flower, then it'll look like the raindrop is in front of, or it's falling on in front of the flower. So that's why I wanted, I didn't want to take them off yet. I'm going to do these little guys, these little cone flowers right here in the purple purple, the dark purple. And I just gradually, gradually come to the bottom and then this is more of like a I don't know let's see what color it is I think I like this one let's do this one it's like a more of a lavendery purple and I'm gonna do I don't know what color this one is. Okay. The centers. I'm going to do this one orange. I like pink and orange together. And we'll do, we'll bring yellow over here and we'll do our butterfly yellow. So this is going to be yellow. And the butterfly is going to, his body is like a brownish. And 
and his wings are going to be this bright yellow. Alright, I know it still doesn't look like much. Ooh, I missed a couple leaves here. But when we go over it with our Sharpie, it's going to be so great. Alright, we need water again. Get my water. And I'm just going to use, you can use a water brush, that's fine. Um, this has got a little bit of masking fluid on it. Uh, water. And I'm using my blue water, whatever, hopefully. Okay. And then you just take it and pull the color in. And there you go. You'll have some darks and some lights. And we'll shade with our black pen too. So don't worry about shading or anything. You just want to fill in with color. Pretty. And then I am going to touch the stem. Maybe it'll bleed out a little. Um, but I like that watercolory look of the puddly look. And then when you go over it with your black pen, you, you fix it. Don't worry. I'll try to stay in the lines. I did kind of go out of lines there. But see how that's like... All right, I darkened it up a little. All right, let's do the butterfly because he's looking, he's looking like he's not even there. And when we color or use our pen on him, it's going to look so good. I'm just going with the light colors. I think I do have goop on this brush. I'm going to change brushes. Simple as this, guys. Super simple, right? I had to get this done. It is May 31st. So, tomorrow is June. I have something special happening tomorrow. Um, something's coming in the mail, and I'll probably do an unboxing. I, I'm going to see what happens with it. We don't know yet, but I'm going to wait, and I'll tell you about it tomorrow. I'm excited. Either way, it's exciting for me, because nothing has to happen. You don't know what I'm talking about. Have you guys heard about Origami Owl? It's a the floating charms inside the living lockets where you tell your story. Well, I am an independent designer for that company, but I just started, so I don't know much about it at the moment. And tomorrow I get my starter kit. It's, the tracking says it should be here tomorrow, so I'm very excited. And, you know, I'm going to take you guys with me on my journey, because you know you're my peeps. You're my peeps. And what's happening is, is you know, if the company initially, oops, I have a center here that I want to do. Initially was intended to do, uh, they call them jewelry bars like home parties but social media is taking over as you know and um, a lot of people are doing jewelry bars on Facebook live and things like that so I am going to probably do some live parties probably do some Facebook live parties but I also want to see what YouTube can do if I don't know if I can um, stream live on YouTube I think I can so I have to look into that and see what happens but regardless even if I don't sell if I don't become a, you know one of the 
stars of the company or whatever. I don't know what they're called. Uh, the different levels of salesmanship or whatever. Um, I get the benefit of discounts regardless. And I love jewelry. And so that's really why I did it at first. And then I thought, well, maybe we'll see about me... Uh, having parties and stuff and seeing what happens. I'm not much of a partier, but I am kind of, I'm not shy, so I can talk to people and I can share my love of things. All right, so that's tomorrow. Meanwhile, okay, it's done. Now, here comes the best part when we're gonna use our permanent pen. It has to be permanent. Just because I don't want you having any issues with running or bleeding into the water-based background. So I have my Sharpie Ultra Fine and a Uniball Vision waterproof pens. Got to let this dry, so I'll be back and we'll finish up. All right, this is where it all comes together. We're gonna first. Let me zoom in a little bit. Gonna just rub off the raindrops. We can reveal our raindrops now. Aww. Some of them aren't as raindroppy as the others because I, like I said, I erased them when I was erasing. But I will just fix that. And these really come off easy with um, just a gentle rub of my finger. So that masking fluid is awesome. I am going to think about playing with that further because I'm sure there's some cool stuff we can do with that. <clears throat> All righty. Now I'm going to get my Sharpie and we're going to doodle. So Let's just start, I'm going to do the border last, I guess, and let's just bring this butterfly back to life. So basically, you can correct anything that you didn't like about your initial drawing with your pen. So you can sh make your heart shapes more defined and... That's what I love about it. It, sh it sharpens everything up. Your little antennas. So see, now he looks like a butterfly. All right, and then I did do some zentangling as well on um, my previous one. So you can always do that. Right now, I'm just gonna follow the main shape of the flowers. I could do a double line on certain stems, but some stems are, I didn't do them as um, thick, so I'll show you what I'll do. And for your grass, I mean, I don't want to zoom in too far because I always get out of the shot. There we go, that's better. I'm going to make like a little kind of jaggly line, like have some tall ones and some short ones. Kind of like this. And then have the same thing. Little grassy marks like this. Um, also, <clears throat> your teardrops, I mean your raindrops, I'm going to outline those. And get them back to looking like that's what they are. So that looks pretty. See what this black pen does? Just makes everything pop. There's one here, but that looks good. So let's do this little guy. He has one, two, three little flowers, I mean little leaves there. And see, I just pulled a line and there's green next to it, but I didn't make it double. You can make these more even with our black line. <clears throat> Let's give it a vein 
and some cross or actually some some more vein lines just on the top half look at that <clears throat> there was a raindrop there <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> I should have done that first and there's one right here we'll make him go behind <clears throat> Because some would probably be behind. So we'll make him kind of poking out from behind. So I can straighten out my round lines. That didn't sound right. Straightening out your round lines. But they, it looked a little wonky. So I can just make them nice and rounded. So that's a tear or a piece of rain behind there. So let's go down here. I'm going to put this one here. He's kind of peeking out from behind. And what else did I want to do to him? He has like a little circle in the middle. And I like, ooh, let's do these little dots. Now that really helped. That one really needed help. Oh, I didn't finish him. I also did like a bunch of cross hatching lines, so I'll come back and add a little extra. But look at that. See how it's popping now? So you can look at half of it and half of it. And then when we outline it, right? So when I outlined it, I want it to kind of have a little place for entangling. So I'm going to go around it twice. The first time I kind of like to follow the actual um, border line because that's where I put the paint, but it doesn't have to be exact. And then let's put a teardrop here. Let's see how it's framing it out. See, I'm so glad I did it again because I really wasn't happy with the first one. It just looked too, this one just looks too harsh. This one looks a lot more what I had in mind. And guess who's calling me? You guys know who. Kiwi, my bird. She hears me talking, I guess. She has supersonic ultra ear hearing powers I need to make a little entangled place right there I'm going to start in the middle and so that way I can make sure it's straight. And you can straighten things out if it got a little wonky or if you kind of lost your, see there's a drip here, I'll put it there. And I didn't do that one either, see I keep forgetting about my drips. Maybe you should go around and do all your drips first so that you don't accidentally write all over them. So I forgot that one. <coughs> Alright, I'll be right back. I'm going to go get Kiwi and then we'll finish up. Okay, she's here. She's going to chill now. Let's see.
Don't you love the Sharpie though for this? The Sharpie is nice. The black ink is so, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> it's very dark. I love it. The black color. Um, what else? And then this guy. This guy, Kiwi. I think we did it by George. Now, here's one of the cool things you can do. You see this little um, flower has like this rim of the blue bled into the pink, right? So I'm going to take advantage of that and I'm just going to make a little centangle space on some of these petals. Oops, I kind of didn't do that one. What else? Um... Same thing over here. This has a nice rim to it. And I'm just going to put lines like this. That's a very simple pattern, right? One of my faves is, um, it's just a little, I'll show you. Let's do one on the tulip. Look at this. What about, you know what we're going to do on, down here we're going to make some hash marks. And, is that what they're called, hash marks? <coughs> to represent shading. <coughs> Sorry. How about on the rows we could go. On here these this needs something so we're gonna go make these little I don't know what they are but they're little things like this Gonna, I just do this on here. I don't know what that is, like a chain of loops. But it's super easy to fill a space. So now I'm just doodling, really. I'm just, uh, wherever you want, like, you can make crosshatch lines to just suggest shading there, like on the bottom of different leaves or petals. This one needs something. Hmm. I'm going to use my white uniball too. How about our butterfly? Maybe some cross hatch lines here. be shaded in here and up against this section. And down here. Not 
don't even think. We could be, oh, I ought to put something here. I did that there. Alright, now let me do <clears throat> the outside. Let's make some areas for disentangling in here. That looks okay. This is messed up. Um, and so I'm just going to fill in those little spaces. But like here, here's what you do with your um, with your gel pen, your white gel pen. We can come back and, because this is colored in, make white check patterns. Or dots. So I'm just basically making a circle in every other open space instead of filling it in with a color like, you know, a square and a square sort of shape. And maybe I'll do black in there. How about, I like the white. I do. Oh, definitely on the red. And it kind of looks like a square anyway. Like you don't have to make it. Um, and I made little loops here. So I could just put little dots in the loops. Can't really see them. But you don't have to. I'll just put dots anyway. So this is just doodling, guys. This is what... Um, Ever use whatever your go-to little doodle design is and then you can always put little highlights on your flowers this little flower here just little shines on some of the middle ones what else uh, highlights on your butterfly this one needs something. He's looking a little drab. All right, and then I was just going to write, and I don't want to smudge that now, but I'm definitely going to zentangle these areas too. Oh. How about... like one of my go-to's that one. We gotta do arches. Um. <clears throat> Just circles. I could do hearts. I'm gonna do hearts up here. Kind of small, but you get the idea. It just frames it in nice, right? Makes that line a little more dark, and then you can always if, see you had enough room here to make two triangles. Then it really comes together. I'll put a dot at the bottom. Uh, I have a couple more spaces, but then I'm going to write April showers bring May flowers. And I'm going to try and write it in neat penmanship. And I'm going to, maybe we should follow the border. 
and was kind of going to follow the the curve. What do you think I should do? Are you yelling at the screen, telling me? All right. Um, but I'm definitely braiding it. I'm going to stay on the top of the April. Just printing. Showers. Bring. Page is a little wonky, so how does that look? I kind of like it up there. That was a good choice. April showers. It's a little wonky. Bring May flowers. April showers. I ran out but I put May at the end. I like that better. So let me finish untangling. I'm gonna put more of these. Um, Cool. I don't know, I kind of want to do more stuff to it. But I think we're going to call it done. Alright? So look what you got there. And you can doodle to your heart's content, like I said. I mean, I could add more white, but I think I'm good. I'm just going to leave it. Alright, you guys? So we got it done. I'm going to get this uploaded and look for our next art journal page coming in June hopefully before the last day of June. Um, all right, I hope you liked that. Thanks for watching.